So I just noticed that my wedding ring was not on for most of the shoot. Uh, I actually tied it to the string here because I was lifting weights earlier and I didn't want it to scratch against the bar. Throughout the video, at some point, I will go from ringless to having my ring back on. Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. This is the newest PC I've put together and there are two pretty unique things about this. The first is that it's in the Cooler Master NR200 ITX case, uh, which is a case I've wanted to build in a really long time now, so I'm glad I finally got the chance to. Uh, but the second thing is that it has an RTX 3060 in it. What's special about this 3060 is that it's from Galax, which is a pretty uncommon brand uh, to find in the US compared to say like EVGA, MSI, etc. This isn't going to be a build guide per se because let's be honest, it's still super difficult to find a graphics card right now in the current state of the market. Uh, I instead want to approach this video as like a build showcase because I'm pretty proud of how this build came out. Uh, I think it looks super clean and it's a white build which is something that I don't do too often on the channel. And if anything, hopefully this can give you ideas uh, for your own PCs like say if you've been itching to downsize your PC case to a small form factor or you can use it as an inspiration for like an APU build with parts that are actually in stock. Uh, but the white RTX 3060 in this is what drove the color scheme that I went with and huge thanks to Galax for setting it over for this build. Uh, as I said earlier, they don't have a huge market share in the US, uh, but what I've been told by my contact is that they're actively working to change that. They launched their own line of peripherals earlier this year, and most recently released from that is their Sonar 2 white gaming headset, which can be found alongside their other peripherals at their recently refreshed website, galaxstore.net. My contact also told me that they're making a concerted effort to allocate more graphics cards for the US market, uh, so definitely be on the lookout for those on their website as they restock. There's no random raffle systems or waiting in any queues or anything like that. Uh, to combat the scalpers and bots, what they're doing is limiting the cards to one per customer and they require registration with a physical address before ordering. As with all graphics cards though, the supply is still much lower than the demand. So be sure to check frequently and do act quick if you happen to catch something in stock. But all right, let's go over the specs of this build and then check out how it performs. Starting us off is the six core 1230 Ryzen 5 5600X. This is still a very solid processor despite Intel 12th gen launching recently. Those perform well, but at the added cost of more expensive motherboards and DDR5 memory. Because of that, AMD's current 5000 series lineup remains still very relevant. I'm cooling this with the Vitru V5 cooler in white, which has great cooling performance for the price. These can regularly be found for 25 bucks on Amazon. The motherboard I'm using is the ASRock Fatality B450 ITX. This is actually the very first motherboard I built an ITX system with a couple of years ago, and I'm repurposing it for this build. This did require a BIOS update to work with the 5600X, which I performed using an older chip. The graphics card on this build is the Galax 3060 EX White. This card delivers solid performance and has great thermals, quiet acoustics, all while looking super clean. With both the 5600X and 3060 overclocked, the 3060 was able to remain below 70 degrees during gaming sessions. This was without the need to even touch the default fan curve, which had the fans running no more than 40 to 50% fan speed, and that works out to be around 12 to 1300 RPM, so this card stays nice and quiet. For memory, we have 16 gigabytes of Team Group T-Force Delta RGB at 3200 MHz CL16. Definitely had to go with the white kit to match the rest of the build on this. I use these a lot because I personally like the look of them. They're really sleek and simple design and often priced pretty competitively with other low cost kits that look super funky. For storage, I split the cost between an SSD and spinning drive. We've got a 500GB XPG SX8100 M.2 NVMe drive, as well as a 2TB 7200RPM 3.5 inch drive from HP. This gives a total capacity of 2.5TB at roughly the same cost as 1TB of solid state storage. There's enough room for a handful of games on the main drive and plenty of room on the secondary drive for more games, as well as storage of media files and anything else that is infrequently accessed. Powering the system is the FSB Dagger Pro 750. This is a fully modular SFX power supply that is 80 plus gold efficient, has a 10 year warranty, and it lands on the B tier of the ever so popular PSU Cultist tier list. 750 watts is a bit overkill for the components that this build is running right now. A quality 550 watt unit would be enough to power the system, but having the extra headroom does make this unit run pretty much silent and will cover every upgrade this system would ever see moving forward. Last we have the case, the Cooler Master NR200. This is the original version that has been succeeded by the P and Max versions. So being the older model means it's pretty easy to find at a discount. I picked it up at its frequent sale price of $65. I got it for that much with another $10 rebate 
bringing it down to $55, which I think is a great deal for this case. This is a really clean looking chassis that strikes the perfect balance for me between size and compatibility. It's small, but not so small that you have to make a ton of compromises for other components. This fits a lot of air coolers and graphics cards without issue. One of the downsides though, is that there is no dedicated power supply shroud to hide the cable management and the space behind the motherboard tray is very shallow. So you have to do a bit of extra work if you wanna make this look clean. Also, if you wanna run a mechanical drive like I am, you're limited to mounting it on this radiator bracket, which doesn't look the best, but at least in this scenario, the drive's backside, which has like a black and green PCB color scheme, it kind of matches the rest of the colors of the build. And it goes on just like this. And like I said, it doesn't look the best, but it works. We're looking at around $800 for everything except for the graphics card. Putting in an unrealistic and ultra rare $330 MSRP for an RTX 3060 puts this build a little over $1,100, but putting in a more realistic price of $500 to $600, which is what I've been seeing in my local market, uh, puts this build between $1,300 to $1,400. I built this system live on stream, which if you didn't know, I stream weekly on Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time on YouTube. I usually spend the first part of stream working on whatever projects I have going on at the moment. And the second half, I deal hunt and do user submitted PC build and setup showcases, among other things. So definitely stop by sometime if you get the chance. Now let's take a look at system performance. I've got the 5600X overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz on all cores. The 3060 is running at an additional 200 megahertz on the core and 500 megahertz on the memory. And the 16 gigabytes of RAM is running at the rated 3200 megahertz XMP. All games were tested at both 1080p and 1440p. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the benchmarks. So those were the benchmarks and that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for this video. Overall, I really liked how this build came out. Uh, it reminds me a lot of Genji from Overwatch, the, the color scheme we have going on here. I bet a figurine or a Funko Pop of Genji would look really good in this build. Uh, and I know Joey Delgado would definitely agree with that. Uh, what I'm most proud of though is the cable management. I think looking into the main chamber, I got it as clean as it could possibly be. Let me know your thoughts down below though. I'd love to hear what you think about how I did as well as on the build overall. Uh, but with that said, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I wanna thank you all as always for watching and for continuing to support the channel. It means a lot to me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you down in the comments as well as in the next stream and or video. Bye.